What if I told you that the future of sex was mind reading? Told you that your deepest, darkest, most unconscious fantasies, yes, Freudian level unconscious fantasies, could be read by a machine, and that they very well might be one day. You tell me. Today we're talking about what's called the fantasy algorithm. This is crazy. I am just, oh, oh, buddy, we're going down a rabbit hole today. Ain't hey, no secrets left. Uh-uh. Mm -mm. We wish. There are some scientists from the University of Copenhagen and the University of Helinski, which recently combined like artificial intelligence with an EEG. And they did this to publish for a study in a paper they called Personally Attractive Images. Now, personally attractive images, what does that mean? These are faces you are attracted to. Pretty simple, right? So basically what they did was they wired up volunteers and connected them all up to this EEG. And then they showed them a bunch of different pictures of people's faces. A wide range from like all different kinds of people. And they recorded through these wires and through the EEG their positive or negative reactions to these faces. By monitoring the subject's brains, they were able to train a neural network based on their positive or negative reactions. Steady refining, revising, then this neural network came out and generates its own set of ever-increasing pleasing faces until finding the one that each subject would consider extremely appealing. How crazy is that, first of all? Like, we're not even into the, the crazy part yet. How insane is that? That they recorded these people's brains, they show them all these different faces, and then they train a neural network based on their neurons <laughs> to create a set of images that goes from what they would consider least to most attractive to something they would consider like the ultimate attraction. How insane is that? Tell me that's not crazy. So this process isn't obviously fully developed yet. Very new, it's just in the study research phase right now, but it is a thing and that's wild and it worked and whoa, are we building neural networks with our brains now? I'd rather we did it personally. Or I don't know, maybe I, I uh... There's pros and cons. Now, or why do they call this the fantasy algorithm? This technology could be used to reveal and let us interact virtually with fantasies and preferences straight from your unconscious mind. Because here's the thing, if a researcher was showing you faces or showing you anything, the homepage of Hub, and asked you to pick the thing you were most attracted to, you would probably say something that you found to be acceptable to say. The thing is this brain reader, this mind reader, it, it, you can't fool that. You can't fool that. You might say, ew, that's not, I'm not, ew, that's gross. But like your brain is going, we love it. And then the researcher's like, we know that you love it. You get what I mean? So it's like reading your unconscious deepest fantasies. Now, even if it can read your fantasies, what does that actually mean? What would that look like? And what would that entail could come next? So the technology to generate your own personal deepest fantasy. There's still so much stigma and taboo wrapped around this. It's really hard for us to have these conversations. Could be using a platform that shows you different things, that go. shows you, you know, this is the, this is an interactive experience of anatomy, or this is what it's like to um, pleasure a woman. OMG, yes, is a good example of that. And you're absolutely right. Technology shouldn't be replacing us. It should augment it and help us understand us. Well, yeah. It's plausible, and it, I think it could come pretty pretty soon, but, well, there's no affordable brain scanning device. So it's really just a price barrier is the only thing truly stopping you from being able to project your deepest, most unconscious hidden fantasies on your wall in your bedroom. We know that the image generation tech is already there, already pretty much where it needs to be. You can see this with AI art and AI image generation. So if we have the mind reading tech, it could easily create these images quite perfectly. Now, right now, the erotic genie, as this article says, the erotic genie is still in the bottle. With all these AI image generators, they're all pretty filtered. You, these networks, they are blocked from generating anything sexually explicit or explicit in any other way. But the fact is that as soon as you let this genie out, as soon as you remove these blocks or somebody removes these blocks, once it's out, it's out. Do you feel me? 
Now, in the past, this same brain scan technology, it would only be able to determine, like, facial expressions or eye movements, physiological changes. It was more like a polygraph test. It could tell if you were lying, like, if you say, I don't think this is attractive, but, like, your heart rate's going and you're sweating and you're, like, it could go, it would work kind of like a polygraph. One, polygraph tests are not always accurate. Two, polygraph tests are very outdated. We have better things now. Even the subtlest hint of a like or dislike can be detected. Not only that, but the artificial intelligence can create custom curated images in seconds perfectly. They then go on to, in the same article, they can go on to discuss how if we had affordable or portable EEGs, tapping into your sexual subconscious, your deepest hidden parts of your mind, the things that only your brain can reveal. They could also even incorporate facial recognition into this software, already existing facial recognition software. So say that your ultimate fantasy is Danny DeVito riding a large white horse. You won't want to tell anybody this because they'd look at you like, is wrong with you. That's your deepest fantasy though. You're never going to tell anybody. So using facial recognition and using an image generator, I'm just going to show you an example. We're going to go with a hypothetical deepest fantasy of Danny DeVito riding a large white horse. So I'm going to show you. Let's say, hypothetically, that is my deepest, darkest fantasy. Obviously, I'm never going to tell y'all that because that would be weird and embarrassing. So I'm not going to tell you that. But if you hook up a cord to my brain, you'd be able to see that Actually, my deepest fantasy is uh, it's Danny DeVito on a horse. So what we can do, and I'll just show you how far this images have come. If it finds out and it can recognize Danny DeVito in my brain, right? It's picturing like what I'm picturing. And when I create this image, if this was my fantasy and what could be shown to me as of right now. Your unconscious mind is unconscious for a reason. This is also called your id, right? You have your id, ego, and superego. Your id, it's the deepest, most like primal human desires and wants and needs. This part of your mind, it, you're not consciously aware of it. And it's really hard. It takes a lot of therapy and a lot of time to be able to become consciously aware of your unconscious. But regardless, this what is in your unconscious may be something that you have not explored. They have been inhibited f to explore because maybe it's scary or usually it is deeply related to trauma. If you've been through trauma, a lot of the times your unconscious fantasies will be a manifestation of that experience in a more positive way, but still a manifestation of that experience. So accessing your unconscious can be extremely dangerous. Additionally, viewing your unconscious can be extremely dangerous. Not only because now you have to face the deepest part of yourself, but because it's unconscious for a reason. There's a reason that your brain is not having you become consciously aware of what is there. So if we had this ability to now access our unconscious desires, there would be a lot of therapeutic and recreational value to that. That'd be great for trauma work, for overcoming, you know, impulses and different things like that and all kinds of different behaviors and whatever. You can find those roots and all that. Be great for those things. It could also create a perfectly fully customized erotic world that you could then immerse yourself in. And the wonderful thing is it could then create this fully customized to your deepest needs, your deepest wants just this erotic world. But the problem is that projecting these sexual fantasies, projecting any fantasies that are from the unconscious mind, it's a fine line between exciting and disturbing, thrilling and horrifying. For one, how addictive could this be? When you're driven by your unconscious desires, like I said, that's your most primal, your most like instinctual, deep-seated desires and needs. The things that are ran by your id, including your unconscious fantasies, are your sex drive aggression. Things like that are very much, they're not as refined or socially intelligent. And also another thing that the unconscious, the id, our impulse control is lower. So if this mind reading fantasy generator was good at its job, it would more than likely become extremely addicting. Extremely addicting. Because you are directly being fed your most deep-seated wants and needs. It's very unlikely, I think, that that wouldn't be super freaking addictive. So if mind reading were to make its way into the adult entertainment industry, that would be problematic 
for one, because of privacy reasons, obviously, and I think that people would be very skeptical of this, because most people do. Who would want that to be recorded anywhere, you know? If in this hypothetical world this were private, and this were actually completely private and safe, and nobody, none of this could ever be exploited or used against you, used to extor <laughs> used an extortion or anything like that, let's say that that's the case, this closes that gap between what you know, adult entertainment producers and companies and creators think that you want and what you truly, deeply want. Not only that, but now you can have anyone you want. It's it's basically like a deep fake that you're creating in real time in your own mind. It'd be like a deep fake of whoever you want doing whatever you want, whenever you want. Now, obviously, the appeal, the allure of seeing what you would come up with, where you, if you were connected to this machine, it's really likely that it wouldn't be what you think. It's really likely that you wouldn't be able to accurately guess what you would actually want, because you're probably fighting something at some point. All of that stuff, what is what is normal, what's socially acceptable, what's typical, you know, what makes you fit in and be normal, there's typically a, a detraction from that and what you would want ha if all of that is removed. And when we're looking at your unconscious mind, it is, because your conscious mind is what brings in those social inhibitions, those behavioral inhibitions. You know, if I do this thing, that makes me weird, or if I do this thing, that thing is bad, or if I do this thing, people won't like me. That kind of stuff does not exist in the unconscious mind. And also, typically, when things are pushed to the unconscious mind, it's put there for a reason, which is another reason that this could actually be very helpful technology in, uh, in other ways, right? It could be so good for mental health care. It could be crazy in finding out, you know, how, you know, we could see eyewitness testimonies from their memory, legitimately from their memory. We could see eyewitness testimonies. You could go back and explore, like, different events. How that affected you, you could go through and be able to understand what is driving you to behave in certain ways. Dealing with something you're trying, you have like a behavior or a habit or a tendency that you're trying to get rid of and you, you know you need to fix it because it's bad, but like say you're always getting really irritated with your partner and you don't know why. You could go in here and you could find out that actually it's because when he does this thing that triggers me in this way and then I start thinking that I need to do something so I behave in a way that obviously makes us fight or something like that. It would be a way to access and find, you know, what your deepest fears are because your deepest fears actually do, and again, that none of this is in your conscious awareness, but your deepest fears really do affect the way that you act and the way that you view the world, the things you want, the things you don't want, the things you do and don't do. Your biases, you could find out where you actually genuinely have biases because we all do. Even if, even if you say you don't, that you have biases in some things, and you may have had a teacher, right, in second grade, that you hated because she was mean, and she was just awful. I'm a second grade teacher, I didn't like her, okay? Me and my friends were passing notes, and it was just me and two of my friends, and we were passing notes, we were being, they were tiny little piece of paper. During class, I know I was doing it wrong, I was doing the wrong thing, whatever. But she, you know what this woman did to me? Okay, I'm, I'm a happy little second grader, passing notes with my two friends. She makes me come up there, an answer to it. She collects the notes from all of us. We all have the notes. She makes just me go up and answer to it. She makes just me stay after class. And I'm the only one that gets in trouble, even though we were all passing notes together. I'm not passing notes. I'm not writing to myself. So I did not like my second grade teacher. And I remember she would wear her hair like it was like a really short bob, like chin length bob. And I hate that hairstyle now. And let's say I get a new boss and I am working a new job and I hate my boss and I can't figure out why she bothers me so much. But then I find out it's because she looks just like my second grade teacher and she acts and sounds like my second grade teacher. So all of those negative feelings of that come back. That was just a hypothetical example, but I kind of went off on a really big tangent there. Sorry. <laughs> I just think this is insane. It is a huge privacy concern for obvious reasons, but it is crazy to think about. What do you think your unconscious mind would show you? Would you want to use this for, you know, erotic fantasies? Would you want to use this for mental health care? Would you want to use this for purely entertainment even? Envisioning, you know, your perfect wedding and being able to go off of that? Who knows? There's just so much cool stuff that can come from this. This is brand new, so we don't have a lot yet. It's only gonna get better, it's only gonna get crazier. This is all we got right now, but I hope this was interesting. This just is, there's so much to think about. I am so blown away by this and the idea of this, and I cannot imagine 
all the horrible ways this could be used to ruin people's lives, but also all the ways it could be used to be a cool fun time for 20 minutes. So uh, if you're interested in this type of video, you need to go to my Patreon because that is a core part of what I'm going to be doing on Patreon. This video might or might not be monetized. I don't know. It is definitely, I am taking it like much more, I think, a psychological, technological approach than a sexual approach, but still, it might get demonetized. Either way, that's what you can find on Patreon, is deep dives into things that YouTube is less fond of, that YouTube is not as interested in. We're talking about the future of sex. We're talking about all that kind of stuff. Deep dives into all that stuff. That will only be on Patreon for obvious reasons. That should be up this week. If you're watching this video, it's up. Go sign up for it. It's cheap, and we can get to know each other, and we can hang out. I'll do polls. I'll do all kinds of stuff. I mean, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to make you promises, but I'll, like, be able to talk to you guys, get to know you guys. If you're a creep, don't come. I'll come over there. I don't want you there. But if, uh, as long as you're a normal, cool, chill person, I want you there. We'll talk about chatbots. We'll talk about everything. It'll be a lot more chill, and also it'll have all of those deep dives. So thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think. Let me know all the ways that this either scares you or amazes you or what you, what kind of different things you can see coming in the future. Thank you so much for clicking again. And if you're still here, you made my day and please be safe out there.